in business, um, <clears throat> and I was very touched when I heard uh, one of the ladies talking about how the older people are not being taken care of and things have changed drastically with COVID. Look at us, we're not touching each other. We want to touch one another, but it's just not happening. So what do we do? The market trends are here. We meet on social media, we meet on Zoom and so on, and we meet on, on, on uh, Facebook. <laughs> we have to make use of what is, is, is in, in, in our disposal at the moment, right? That are printing house, but the news that you get via Facebook, right? You don't have to go and buy your newspaper. You can get stuff on Uber. You don't need to have a car. You, you know, so there's something that is changing and we also, we have to change. So that is why I, I did join New Skin after trying a couple of businesses, uh, which is a, go it's a global opportunity and I'm not promoting them. I'm just explaining how it's working, right? Because I can work anywhere in the world, anywhere in, in the state of, of United States by just using my cell phone, right? So we, we have to find a way to, 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 to get into that business mind, to get into those trends that, that are happening right now, right? Because that is how we're going to make our money. So you, you're going to be at home uh, using your smartphone to be able to make extra income. We need to find out opportunity in, in health. You, have, you can use a, a biophotonic scanner, which just read what's, what's happening you know, with, with, with your system and be able to tell you, okay, you need electrolytes, you need this, you need that. And all the, you know, that's all that's happening. We, we're hearing about self-driving cars and whatnot. Uh, I don't know exactly <laughs> how that's going to work. But we, what I'm saying is just we need to be aware because the times are changing. As we look at now, 76% of the workforce is the millennials. And uh, those are the people born from um, in the 2000, right? And then 34% is, 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 is Generation X, which I'm part of, and soon I'll be moving out of it, you know. 18% is, the, boom, is the, the boomers. It's our mothers, it's our fathers. So we need to be able to hold each other's hands and, 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 and look at what the issues are. We cannot leave anyone behind. I mean, just to, to respond to Mama's issue about transport. In the US, when you use a wheelchair, you will get a car that will have, um, I don't know the terminology, but you will be able to get with your wheelchair in a car without that uh, frustration and whatnot. Uh, so, I mean, we really need to, to know what we're doing. I know there's a couple of young people in here and uh, I want to, 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 to say to us, we need to focus. You know, the young people need to be very, very focused. Because when you are focused, then you will know where you want to go. You will come to these meetings and understand what the issues are, and then go back and, and implement uh, 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 solutions. Because now you know what the problems are. Because as we keep living, we're going to realize that exactly what the issues were with the elderly, we're going to experience them if we do not put things in place. There is a lot of money going around, but we need to be able to tap into that and, and educate one another. In the business that I'm in, I'm working with, uh, I've got a lady, she's probably oh, 72, and she's doing this. I had to coach her how to post on Facebook how to place her orders, how, you know, the little knowledge that I have, I have to share with them. And then the younger people who are younger than me, I expect them to be able to do the, the coding that is necessary for all the things that we're going to be needing going forward. Because honestly, technology is here and it's going nowhere. And we need to, 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 to be able to, to adapt to it. But 
The only way you can do all these things is to be really, really focused and be intentional about what we are doing. Thank you very much. And I apologize that I kind of lost some of my slides, but my heart was into sharing with you what I see that we need to do. And as I said, I've started some business and they didn't go as well as they should, but maybe God had a plan because had I been able to do the construction business, I would be broke by now because construction had been on hold for a while. So we need to come together and think ahead of all the things that are gonna be happening in our country and take care of ourselves. Nobody will take care of us. We, we are all that we have. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Mrs. Davis, for that uh, also very inspiring speech. Uh, and you're, you're right, God has a plan for all of us. Um, on a lighter note, what I can see is that your skin is amazing and there is definitely something to be said for a new skin because you always had good skin. It looks even better now. You are glowing in beauty. So thank you. The next uh, speaker uh, who is a very important person, a very good friend of our Consul General and the Consulate is Dr. Adrian Bailey from the Windy City Chapter of the Lynx Incorporate, Incorporated. And she will talk to us about women in community service. Thank you very much, Dr. Bailey, over to you. Well, good afternoon to my dear colleagues in South Africa. And uh, can you hear me? We can hear you very well. We can see you as well. Very okay. Well. So um, I want to say uh, also hello to my friends who I haven't seen here even in the United States for quite some time. Um, this morning, I do want to take up the theme of building lasting partnerships between women in South Africa and um, U.S. Um, primarily under the auspices of the Windy City Lynx. As some of you know, I wear many hats, but this morning I'm going to represent the Lynx. Um, thank you so much, CG, for the invitation. And I'd also like to acknowledge that this morning we have joining us Link uh, and Dr. Lizzie Naguena Scobar from Cincinnati, who is our international director for the Lynx in the central area. I'm going to go briefly, if you'll bear with me, to a um, PowerPoint I'd like to present that I'm going to go through quickly. Let's see. Okay, here we go. I just say why this is loading. This morning I had a computer crash, um, so I really didn't um, hear anything after um, Dr. Ward up to, um, uh, up to Magugu. So I apologize for that. Let me just see what's going on. Okay. I can't do that. Just bear with me. I'll get this up one way or another. Okay, can you, okay. I think you should be able to see me now. Let me just change this view to slideshow. Okay, so once again, I'm, I'm, I'm representing Windy City chapter of the Lynx Incorporated. Um, I, um, our national organization has a tagline of LinkedIn friendship connected in service. And we have 16,000 women of color in 288 chapters in the US and DC, Bahamas and the UK. We have five program areas that we work in and um, they are directed to meet the critical needs of underserved communities in the United States and globally. For the purpose of uh, today's uh, conversation, it's just important to know that under our international facet, we have built 60 schools in South Africa. And so for the Windy City chapter, I lead international trends and our 
um, project title is Linking Hearts. As you can see, Heart stands for Health, Youth Development, and Culture International Exchange. Our goal is to promote health awareness, youth development, and cultural international exchange, uh, primarily between Chicagoans and South Africans. We describe uh, when we characterize our program as having three important qualities, collaboration, impact, and sustainability. We have 14 partner organizations that you see here, uh, representing organizations both in South Africa and in the United States. Um, this really enables our uh, commitment to service. So without these organizations, we wouldn't be able to do the work that we do on the ground in South Africa. So I think this emphasizes the theme about building partnerships, which we've been asked to talk about. Overall, we've served 700 uh, individuals in South Africa, our learners at MOFU uh, Primary School, our Link Scholars, the girls who receive sanitary pads, uh, participants in the Chicago Sister Cities Global Youth Ambassador Program, and our on the ground in Durban partnership network. And we are very actively involved in a variety of cultural exchanges with our local leaders here in Chicago of African descent. Um, I described the characteristic of sustainability by the fact that we have won seven awards over the last several years. Um, I have a very small budget, which the Lynx uh, funds, but we receive cash in these awards, and so it enables us to deliver more uh, service to South Africa. This is just a list of our program accomplishments, and I have highlighted in green uh, particular ones that particularly wait, uh, relate to women. The planning that we did together with the South African Consulate in 2019 to host a wonderful International Women's Day celebration. As I mentioned, we're distributing free pads uh, to 300 girls in Mapapateta. And we um, have also sponsored in Durban an International Women's Day celebration where we were able to get a motivational speaker, gift bags, and purchase journals. And our latest sort of um, involvement has been with the Global Youth Ambassadors Program. And I'll be speaking a little bit more about that. Here is once again a, a list of just recent international uh, exchanges that we um, have been involved in in Chicago. So once again, the theme we've been asked to address is building lasting partnerships. And here you show, you, well, you see um, a photograph of our International Women's Day where we see all the beautiful attire of our South African women integrated with our colleagues here in Chicago. <clears throat> the story I really want to share <clears throat> that I think embodies what we are most proud of is our access to success program. I call this investment in the next generation. So Annalisa Singo, who you see on the far left, was one of two students who, along with her principal, the link sponsored to attend our National Assembly in Seattle in 2008. So following that visit, to America and during my next trip to South Africa, we launched the Access to Success program at SS Abini High School in Durban, South Coast. With the guidance of Esther Ramusi, who has already mentioned by Dr. Ward, who had mastered in her years uh, living in Cape Town, the admissions process to Stellenbosch. So over the years, Mrs. Ramusi has recruited hundreds of black and colored students from townships in the Eastern Cape, and the Western Cape and as far as Limpopo. And I'd like to just take this opportunity to recognize Esther, founder of NCAW Western Peninsula, where I am a member, and NCAW National Public Relations Officer, my close friend, my colleague, and mentor to me in all ways of South Africa. So um, I just wanted to speak a little bit about these uh, scholars because their stories are fascinating. Um, Annalisa Single was our first university graduate. She truly exhibits the characteristics of a lifelong learner. She was awarded a Lynx Kickstart Scholarship um, to attend Stellenbosch, but due to an admissions glitch, and in spite of Mrs. Ramusi's advocacy on her behalf, she was not admitted. But she bravely returned to Durban, where she earned three degrees, a diploma in nature conservation, a Bachelor of Technology, 
And after receiving her diploma, she took on a paid internship at one of the game parks and then later became as a, an administration clerk. She then earned a postgraduate certificate in education from UNISA in 2016. And for the last two years, she has served as a life sciences teacher while studying for a postgraduate diploma. We like to describe Tonda, who you see on the left, as the mother hen of the Link Scholars because she was the first who actually matriculated at Stellenbosch and she ensured that all the students coming down from SS Abini, a total of 18 enrolled, learned the ropes upon their arrival in Cape Town. She graduated in 2014 with a BSc in Molecular Biology and Biotechnology. She subsequently earned a teaching degree as a way to support herself and to give back to her family. For close to five years, she worked as a science teacher in Melmoth Town, where she was recognized by the Provincial Office of Education for exceptional, uh, just uh, recently assisted three students from her former school gain conditional admission to Stellenbosch. She truly embodies the link spirit of giving back. In December 2019, Tondo completed the construction of a new family home for her parents and siblings. She's now returned to Umlazi and currently teaches math and physical sciences. And now that she's back home, she will be pursuing her honors degree in biomedicine and microbiology, hopefully leading to her dream job as a medical researcher. Nawazi um, enrolled in Stellenbosch in 2013. She first studied science and math and but completed her degree in BCom accounting. At one point, Link sent airfare for her to secure a flight back home so she could get emergency medical treatment. But after regaining her strength, she returned to Stellenbosch and she graduated in 2017. Santa Lisa Sweetness, oh, I haven't advanced these slides. Wait a minute, okay. Santa Lisa uh, Sweetness graduated in 2017 from Stellenbosch with a BS uh, degree in molecular biology and biotechnology, majoring in biochemistry and microbiology. She has not yet found employment in her field, but she has taken on temporary jobs while continuing her to, her to search. Um, no, Musa, Sunday, graduated in 2018 from Stellenbosch with a BCom and accounting degree, and last year she completed her honors at UNISA and received her qualification this year. She has remained in Cape Town and is currently in her final year of articles as an audit trainee, and Omusa plans to register as a charter accountant next year. Um, Tola, who you see here, um, is a true model of perseverance. Her mother passed away during the month of her graduation from high school, and this was a devastating blow to her, coupled with the letter from Stellenbosch rejecting her first application. Nevertheless, she found an avenue to eventually gain admission through the university's bridge program, and life was not easy for Tola uh, while attempting to pursue her degree at Stellenbosch. She, was, she had several stops and restarts, but so proud of her because in the end, she persevered. She graduated in 2018 with a bachelor's in civil engineering, and she is finishing up her internship at the Dur in Durban at the National Department of Public Works and Infrastructure. Um, just moving on quickly, Annalisa Way graduated in 2018 with a Bachelor of Science in Molecular Biology and Biotechnology, and she is currently busy with her master's and Sona Bile is a graduate uh, 2019 with a BCom degree in economic sciences and is currently doing a certificate in Python coding with Microsoft in Durban. I think that this brief story um, demonstrates our model of fulfilling the Link's passion for opening up doors of opportunity. I would be remiss if I didn't um, at least mention the guys uh, we had two guys who did finish Stellenbosch um, in 2015 and 2019, and we're confident that even though a number of them left Stellenbosch, that they have completed their studies with several graduations at other universities. Our uh, last little sisters are these two, Sam Cheze and Noel Waitu. Uh, Sam was the first student to be selected. Um, for the Chicago Sister Cities Global Youth Summit. She came to Chicago with her chaperone 
And that was in 2016. And through the Lynx Network in Durban, we successfully recruited No Waito this past year. And interesting enough in terms of connecting our dots, Annalisa Singo, who I mentioned as our first Hi. graduate, was her sponsor. So lastly, I just wanted to say we've learned a few lessons over the years as we have uh, involved ourselves in these partnerships, um, acknowledge it and appreciate cultural differences, plan together and clarify expectations, collect data and evaluate in your partnerships, prepare for complications to arise because they will, and jointly celebrate and publicize successes. So that completes my presentation and thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Bailey, for that inspiring speech. It was very, very motivational to hear about the youth ambassadors. And for me, it has a personal interest because I come from a small village very close to Durban. So I'm very happy to see all of the activity in and around Durban, the South Coast and the North Coast. And it's extremely inspiring to see women um, succeed in uh, subjects and topics such as molecular biology. Very impressive. Thank you. Before we hand it over to my colleague for closing, um, I note that we didn't really have many other questions on the chat. Uh, the Zoom chat. I'm not sure if anybody wants to open for discussion. Any questions they would like to ask to our speakers uh, or any comments that they would like to share today? You're welcome to um, uh, make a note on the chat or you can unmute yourself and ask a question. Well, if, if that is not the case, I did mention earlier on that I had prepared a speech. Uh, I, I will not uh, recite the speech to you at this stage, but I wanted to share uh, a few thoughts. Uh, and the one was that um, this was such an precious date. Um, it is a day after the anniversary of Martin Luther King's I Have a Dream speech. So we're very happy to have coincided in terms of those dates. And the one thing that's very important, and in, in this I would like to quote the words of Ursula Burns. She's the former CEO of Xerox. And she said that, I didn't learn to be quiet when I had an opinion. The reason they knew who I was was because I told them. So today I am a woman. We have had a chance to speak and to, and to discuss how we can support each other and how we can mobilize to deal with the challenges of the times that we are currently living in, both in South Africa and in Chicago. If there are no comments or um, uh, chat questions, I would like to hand over um, to my colleague for closing remarks. She is the consul administration. She is a very strong woman herself with a, a successful career and managing a family, uh, both at the same time. And her name is Ms. Mapula Miambo. Over to you, um, welcome. Sorry, Thank Shakira. The, uh, Ms. Shakara Bharat would like to say something. They've, they put something on the chat. Okay, thank you. I didn't see that. Yes, please go ahead, Ms. Shakara. Okay, um, hello everyone. My name is Shakara Barth and I am a Global Youth Ambassador for South Africa of 2019. I have recently started my own environmental NPO and I am slowly expanding it internationally. Um, it's a youth driven initiative and I would love to get more people involved. Um, I try and advertise it every time that I can. It's a non-profit organization. And I just wanted to say that if anybody is interested in joining, even though it is directed at the youth, we accept people from all ages, um, I will send my email on the chat and you can email me if you'd like to get involved in any way. Thank you. That will be great. We would love to get more information. I would like to greet everyone. Uh, say Good morning to the people in the USA and good afternoon to the South Africans joining us uh, at home. My name is Mapula Miambo. I'm the consul administration at the South African consulate here in Chicago. And I would like to thank uh, the consul general for the opportunity that she gave me to come and be part of the program. 
a special thanks to all the speakers, even though we started on a, on a bad note because of Zoom, but I believe we'll get the slides of all the speakers so that we can uh, uh, learn and empower each other. A special thanks to Ms. Morolo and Ms. Mutuku, Professor Ward, Dr. Maxi Brown, Ms. Bawoti, our poet, and Ms. Davis, and Dr. Bailey. So as women, we just want to thank you for taking your time in your busy schedules. Even though it's a pandemic, most of our programs are suspended, but we thank uh, uh, the time and opportunity that we can be on Zoom, connect with South Africans and Americans amongst ourselves through the platform Zoom. And also I'd like to thank the participants for taking their precious time joining us this morning and afternoon, leaving their uh, uh, um, other, other duties and uh, taking the time to be on the platform. And as women, I would like to take this opportunity to thank Almighty for everything that he has done for us to be here as women, and also to thank and continue as women to play a role in the society. Society in terms of our families, in terms of our workplace, in terms of our businesses, in terms of schools. And uh, I'd like to also add on what uh, Ms. Mutuku said, that we must not forget boys because they turn out to be men and they abuse our children, our girls. Let us all partner and share the experiences and knowledge. And I would also like to thank Ms. Motan for giving me the time to thank each and every one. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Motan. Thank you, Ms. Um, uh, that concludes the end of our session. We would like to thank everybody again for attending. And please stay in touch with us at the South African Consulate in Chicago. We are a Women's Strong Consulate General in Chicago, and we love engaging with our women in Africa in economic and cultural activities. Um, Ms. Motan, may I just make one humble request? I saw that uh, when uh, Ms. Bawuti did her poem, the recording had stopped. Can she just, as we leave, do render the item to, for us so that uh, we can have it on the record, please? I'm sorry to do this to you, Ms. Bawuti. <laughs> uh, should I start? Okay, um, thank you, CG, again. Uh, my poem goes like, uh, I am shattered. Shattered to the call of my being. No longer will I be silent about gender-based violence. I am shattered. I have so many questions, but no answers. Oh, women, you are so resilient, yet so vulnerable. I am shattered. My nerves are shattered. When men see you, they see the next object of abuse. I ask myself, is this a reality or a dream? I am shattered. I grew up in a generation where men were protectors. Your uncle was your father. The guy next door was your, mother, your brother. But today, every man is a stranger. I bow my head in honor of those men who still respect women, remembering they came out of one. I am shattered. I am shattered, but I will still rise. You may abuse me physically, verbally, emotionally, but you know what? I will still rise. You may strangle me with your powerful hands. You may kill me with your hatefulness. You may infect me with HIV AIDS. Oh yes, but I will still rise. Be beautiful and stronger than before. What in Jabba Fuzzy? What in Timbokoto? You strike women, you strike a rock. Amanda! Thank you, ladies.
Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, everybody, for joining us. We really love and appreciate you. And please let us connect. If you want to link up with anyone who is on this platform, get in touch with us. We can be able to connect. Uh, I love technology because it has made us able to continue to connect from wherever we are so that we take whatever projects we have forward and that together when we collaborate we can do so much so much more thank you to all our speakers we really appreciate your time and thank you for attending everybody and i'd like to thank uh, mr terence chisebe he has been working tirelessly to put this platform <laughs> Thank you so much, Consul Political. You are one of the gender activists that champions women's <laughs> rights and development, and I appreciate your time. Thank you. Madla! Awe, two. 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 Awe, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We need more of these. Continue. <laughs> we do. We do. As <laughs> many more platforms possible. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye.